First of all, there are two things that, that just amaze me about this story that we've read so far. First of all, what they used to do was they had, they had a box, probably bigger than our box back there that we take offerings in, but they had a box or a, che- or a chest that they would put at the entrance to the temple. And those coming in to worship, that's where they worshiped with their tithes and their offerings. And it says that the king ordered that they go and open up the chest and pay all the people who are doing all the work to rebuild the temple. But don't worry about keeping an accounting of that. Don't worry about keeping track of where the money went and so forth. It's okay because we know that they're dealing faithfully. i got to tell you that that's not the world that we live in today, is it? You know, we've got to keep an accounting of where does the money go? People from this fellowship rightfully want to know, okay, I put money in that box. What happens to it then? You know, so we keep an accounting of what happens to the monies that come through here. But there, they had such an honest environment there of people working for the Lord. There was, hey, pay the carpenters, pay the plumbers, pay the roofers, pay the stonemasons, pay the iron workers. Just give them the money. We, it, they'll deal faithfully with it. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Wouldn't that be awesome if we could say that today? Hmm. But the other one is the bigger one. They found this book. Now, i got to tell you that our translation is actually incorrect because they didn't find a book. Because books were not invented until much later. They found the manuscript. They found the scroll. Now, this would have been the scroll of the Torah. It would be really, really big. It wouldn't be something you could, you know, hide back in the corner and no one would notice it was there. When I was in Jerusalem five years ago now, there's an area right near the Western Wailing Wall. You've probably seen that's the picture they always show, the Western Wailing Wall, and up above is the is the Dome of the Rock and the and the Muslim uh, mosque with the gold dome that's up there and so forth. And what you don't see is if you were standing there facing the uh, the wailing wall down at that level, there's a little doorway off to the left that goes back into this kind of cavernous area. And back in that cavernous area, they keep some scrolls of the law. And, and this is this is still typical Jewish tradition. And And the scrolls, I mean, they're like a parchment that's maybe so wide and then it's rolled up on a long stick. And every so often, and, and I'm, I'm not sure which uh, certain holidays and feast days they do this, but at certain times they will go in and they keep this in, in like this tabernacle kind of thing or closet, special closet for the Torah. There are other books in there that people can read and look at, but this nobody touches except the rabbis go in at certain times and they take out this scroll and they actually carry it out of that area and... Uh, do some stuff. I'm not sure exactly what they do. I haven't actually seen this firsthand, but I saw the scroll and where it's where it's kept. It's pretty amazing. But it's that big. It's that big. And this would have probably been that big. So they they found it. Where did they find it? Where would it have been? Well, I can tell you where it would have been. Deuteronomy chapter 31, you don't need to turn there, but you might mark it down and look at it later. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 24 to 27 says this. So it was when Moses had completed writing the words of this law in a book or on a scroll. So this is the scroll. When they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it beside the Ark of of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there as a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. If today while I am yet alive with you, you've been rebellious against the Lord, then how much more after my death? That's where the scroll was kept. It was kept beside the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark was in the most holy place. It was the place where the blood was poured out. It was the altar. It was the most holy altar. It was a place where only the high priest went once a year with the blood of the covenant and poured it out for the the forgiveness and the covering of sins, looking forward to the day when Jesus, one true sacrifice on the cross, would accomplish fully and completely And in faith, they were looking forward to that day, not even knowing about that day. 
And there it was. And I find it very interesting that it was like we found it there. I don't think it was a matter of nobody knew that's where it was, but nobody ever bothered to open it and look at it or do anything with it. Obviously, what had been commanded in that law wasn't being held to from the standpoint of there was supposed to be a copy of it in the hands of the king. The king was supposed to have a copy of this so that he could read it every day, so that he would also know all about the covenant and all about the law, all about the this relationship with God, how it was to be, not how he thought it should be, but how it was to be. And so that he could lead the people correctly, being a student of the word. Well, that obviously wasn't taking place because here's Josiah, who from age 16 has been seeking to follow the Lord. And now it's 10 years later and they bring him the law and he's never heard it before. And he hears it the first time and he tears his clothes. A sign in the day of repentance, of sorrow, of mourning. Why would he do that? Hmm. Well, because if you study the book of Deuteronomy, if you study the book of Exodus, you will find that there are specific prophecies and there are specific blessings and cursings pointed out to the children of Israel, which it would have been about a thousand years previous to this happening, of what would happen in these days. Exactly that. It tells them, you will be rebellious. And when you do that, you will set up for yourselves a king. There was no idea of a kingdom except God being king when that was written for another 500 years or so. And yet in, that, in those books, it prophesies that when you set yourselves up a king, make sure he does this, make sure he does that. A king? What's a king? We're not going to have a king. You're, you're our king. No, in 500 years, you're going to change your mind. And you're going to, you're going to want to be just like the peoples around you. And most of all, the reason he would tear his clothes is because he prophesied that if you leave me and you follow after other gods and you make for yourselves idols of stone and wood and you bow down to them instead of worshiping me, and these are the curses that will fall upon you. And when Josiah heard that, he knew that it was true. And he knew what his father and his great-grandfather and other kings before him had done. And he realized what was going to happen in his nation. You know, there are many followers of the Lord today who may have an ark in their lives, but they ignore the book. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, they've got a faith in God. They have a place of worshiping God. They understand that they have been saved by grace through faith. It's not of themselves, but they're God's workmanship. And so they might have a prayer life of sorts. But all they do is they go to the ark and worship and recall the blood of the Lamb. And right next to that ark is the book saying, Open me, open me, open me. Nah. It becomes a giant relic on a bookshelf. It becomes one of a number of books that just kind of never get opened. It's that thing the pastor opens when he teaches, but I don't need to think about it myself. Why should we? I'd like to lead you to four verses of Scripture, probably all familiar to you, all in the New Testament, so turn a bunch of books to the right to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And every one of these, if you're one who memorizes Scripture, I would encourage you to memorize these if you haven't already. These are things to know. These are parts of the Word to hide in your heart. 